Hello everybody, Adam Steele from Hot Pulse Studios here and today we're carrying on the Reaper tutorial series. It's quite a specific video today. We talked about routing in a previous video which was to do with sending one particular sound to another place, to do with sends and all that kind of thing. Today we're talking specifically about virtual drums. Uh, this does also apply to certain uh, keyboard synth style plugins that have got multiple outputs and how to use them. But we're going to talk specifically about how to get, say, a drum kit that's a stereo drum kit and split that out into like separate kick drum, separate snare drum, separate toms, all that kind of stuff separately on separate channels so you can process it how you like with your own compressors, EQs, reverbs, all that kind of stuff and then how to combine that back into something stereo at the end so that then you've got all the possibilities to work with. So today we're going to be looking at using two different virtual drum plugins. Firstly, we're going to use the free one MT Power Drum Kit, which we used in a previous video, the one specifically about routing. And then we're going to use Stephen Slate Drums because I'm a big fan of Stephen Slate Drums 5. I used 4 as well. But there is also a free version of Stephen Slate Drums 5. So if this really works for you, you don't necessarily have to shell out the money for the, the big version, although I would wholeheartedly recommend that you do. It's very budget dependent. Of course, you've got to appreciate that not everybody's got the money to throw at that kind of thing. So before we look at anything, let's go back to our project that we've been using on everything. And this time I have made a drum loop in MIDI and that's going to go over and over and over. And it's really relatively simple, but I've made sure I've thrown in uh, hi-hats, rides, toms, just at different points. It's really simple as a drum beat. So have a quick listen to this. And that's just going to loop over and over and over. It's the same thing repeated. So there's no point playing you any more of that because you will very quickly go uh, insane. Yes. So if we look at our mixer window, which is down here somewhere, and I hit play, that comes out of drums. But as it stands, it's coming out as a stereo audio, but we don't have access to the separate kick, snare, toms, all that kind of stuff. And what we want to do is separate that out. Now for this, you need a few things. You need a plugin, whether it's a drum plugin or another synth plugin, something like Contact by Native Instruments is a really good example of this. You need a plugin that is capable of outputting audio on many different channels. You also need to look at the uh, channel routing matrix for that particular channel. And then you also need to use the mixer in Reaper. So you need a plugin that can send out lots of separate sounds, uh, a way to distribute those sounds, and somewhere in Reaper to pick those sounds back up and then use them separately. Now, before we go any further, I should definitely try and make this clear. There's a long way of doing this, which I'm going to do first so that you understand exactly how this works and how it's happening behind the scenes. And then there is a shortcut. But the shortcut I'll show you second, you'll probably end up using the shortcut more often than not. But if you don't understand how the long version works, then you can run into problems further down the line. So I highly recommend you watch all of this video to understand how this is happening. So that then when you use the shortcut, if anything's not quite how you would like it, you know how to change it or how to trace where audio has gone. So we're going to use MT Power Kit for the long way. Uh, and the first thing we need to do, we can see that we've got our drums in MT Power Kit. If we hit them, they'll 
work, of course. And if we open up the mixer window in MT Power Drum Kit, and this could be anywhere for different brands for something like BFD or addictive drums or that kind of thing. They're all in different places, but consult the manual for your particular software if you're not using this specific one. Uh, open it up your mixer and you will find that you've got things like separate volumes. And it's nice that we can change the separate volumes inside the plugin. And there is even a compressor in MT Power Kit, which is nice with a slider knob on that. But that's all the control you have. You can't use your own uh, compressors, you can't use your own EQs per drum, you can't use distortions, whatever it is that you would want to use. Uh, but what you can do is at the bottom, it says out one. So right now, every single channel is coming out of output one. These are all stereo outputs. In the case of MT Power Drum Kit, some of these uh, plugins can give you mono outputs, which can be quite useful for something like a, a single drum. Uh, but the whole point here is by default, everything comes out of channels one and two, which is output one, that stereo uh, kind of output, which means that you hear everything by default. And for most intents and purposes, that keeps it simple. And that's what a lot of people want. Now for us, we want to split that out. So the first thing that we'd probably want to do is start to output. So let's say we want the kick to come out of output one. Great. So the, the snare, we want to come out separately out of output two. So we want to click output two for both of those snare channels. Uh, let's say that we want the hi-hat to come out of output three so that we've got uh, a separate channel for that. Let's say the toms are coming out of output four. Uh, the ride and bell from output five for the ride symbol. And then the crashes and the china out of output six. Now it looks like the way the MT Power Kit is set up, it doesn't have separate overhead microphones or ambient microphones. It just has separate symbol microphones, which is different to some other plugins and how they work. Personally, I prefer to have overhead mics and ambient mics, room microphones as separate channels. But in this case, it doesn't really matter. This is just to demonstrate this point. So now we've rooted all those out. If I hit play, I know what we're gonna hear. Can you guess what we're gonna hear before I hit play? So all we're hearing now is the kick drum. And that's because the kick drum is the only thing coming out of output one. Output one being the one that we hear by default. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to go in to our button up here where it says two slash 16 out. So I'm just gonna close this for a second just to so show you two slash 16 out. What that means, and this comes up for every plugin in Reaper, there are two numbers up there. So the number of out is the number, so the two here is the number of outputs that we are currently using, the, the number that we are telling Reaper to distribute. And the 16 is the number that this plugin is capable of at maximum. So sometimes you'll see two, two out. Sometimes you'll see eight, 16, even 64. I've seen contacts with 64 possible outputs. Now that's a lot of outputs and that's crazy. But if I click on this, it brings in this plugin pin connector. And we can see that out of these 16 channels, uh, the first two are going out to one and two, which means that that's going to the left and the right of that stereo. Now, if I click this tiny little plus button, this will add some more, more output channels. And now we can see that channel one is coming out of its stereos, but channel two is coming out of three and four. So we still won't hear those if we hit play, but we can now see at the top here, it says four 16 out because four of them are assigned. So if we keep doing this and keep doing it and keep doing it, 
as, as it goes, the way that we've decided to do things, we only need to assign 12 of these because we've only gone up to output six. If I decided to assign this slightly differently so that the last ones come, came out of seven and eight, then we would need all 16 channels because each out in MT drum kit, MT power kit, is a stereo set. So that's why it's a little confusing, is that output one is stereo, so that's one, two channels. Output two is stereo, so that's three, four channels. Output three is stereo, so it's five, six channels, and so on and so on and so on. So hopefully that's cleared up that confusion. But we've now assigned 12 out of these 16 possible channels to go out of 12 separate outputs. If I hit play, we're still only going to hear the kick drum. So the next thing we need to do is we need more tracks in the Reaper mixer window to receive this audio so that they've got something coming in that we can work with. So we've got our start, which is that the plugin's sending stuff out. We've got our middle part, which is that everything's being sent out of different channels. Now we need to pick those up somehow. So where it says drums here, actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make one, two, three, four, five, six channels. And the next thing I'm gonna do, right, so even though we can hear the kick drum, I don't want to be using this channel to affect the kick drum because what this could do is this could cause problems where if I move the volume fader on here, that could affect everything else. So just to be sure, I'm going to make a separate channel for the kick drum, just so that you're all aware now. So on the routing for this drum channel, I've made new channels here. I've made six new channels. So in the routing window for the drums, I'm going to untick the master send so that that kick drum channel isn't going out anywhere either because that way when I hit play now, we'll see all the MIDI go and we'll see all those levels going out. You see these really thin spikes now? Those are all the separate channels. We can see the separate drums and the separate cymbals making sound. We just can't hear them because they're not being told to come back out into channels that come out of the stereo master. So this is where sends come in. So firstly, you know what, I'm gonna, before we do these sends, I'm gonna interrupt myself and just for peace of mind, these new tracks, I'm going to name them before we do anything so that we've got some clarity. So I'm gonna name them kick, snare, hats, toms, uh, ride, uh, symbols. That way, when we start using sends, we know exactly where things are supposed to be going. So back to the routing window. And let's just make this further up the screen because this is gonna get quite big. So I'm gonna add a new send to channel four, kick, and that's gonna be audio one and two, are going to audio one and two of the new channel. If I hit play, we hear the kick again, and more importantly, we see the kick moving on the kick. If I had a new send, which is the snare, but then I change the output audio from stereo source three and four, which is output two, if you remember, in MT Power Kit, then hit play. I'll just move this so you can see the kick in the snare channels. So you can see that snare channel going now. So if I just repeat the process, add another send to the hats, that's audio stereo source five and six, and then repeat with the toms, which is audio stereo source seven and eight. Ride would then be, let's go down here, nine and 10. And then last but certainly not least, we've got the symbols, which is coming out through 11 and 12. So that was quite long winded, but we can see now how if I hit close that routing down so we can see everything and hit play, watch all these channels now dance. And so 
The thing is, everything now sounds exactly like it did before when it was all coming out of the same channels. So you think, well, what was the point? But now, let's just say the snare I can load up an EQ on the snare now. And EQ that as I want. I can use any external plugins, anything. I can then send some of this to my The Reverb channel. Okay, so that was a little gratuitous, but if I unsolo the snare. And that's now given me the option of doing that on every separate drum. And if we had overheads and ambient mics, we could then process them as if we had all these separate microphones available to us on a real drum kit. And this is really the way that I prefer to work. So if I, you can see on the mixer window, well, just if I right click on this and show multiple rows, so you can see how all the different sends here from the drums are going to their own separate channels. And the reason that I unticked master send on those drums is so that uh, we're not getting the kick drum coming through twice because the original channels one and two were still live for that. And like I said, I can now leave that tr channel well alone, apart from maybe adding more MIDI drums to it, either by programming or by recording them in using a, a MIDI drum kit, which I covered in an earlier part of the series. Or we can then have everything as we like. And just to finish this off, if I now make a channel here and call it drum group, if I close down the mixer window and all these plugin windows, you can probably see if I just minimize everything a little, how everything's now come up as separate channels. If I click and drag all of them upwards a little, that becomes a drum group folder and the drum group folder has all the audio for all those drum channels coming through it. So I can do things like I can heavily compress all the drums while still having the ability to do things like EQ separate drums. So if I bring up virtual mix rack, uh, ooh, FG stress, you'll do nicely. Nuke mode. extreme of course but that hopefully gives you the the idea that you now have the freedom by doing things this way to expand the drums out into their separate relevant channels to process as you wish to then bring back into a drum group to then process everything that you've already done together so then you've got this three stage thing of the the plugin that makes the noise being split out into the separate channels as if it was a real drum kit, then brought back into a bus group to uh, process all together. And that's a very professional way of working. Okay, so it's time to show you a slightly quicker way of doing things. It's not massively, massively quicker, but it is a big time saver if you do this a lot. And that is, uh, so I've, first things first, I've changed from MT Power Kit to Stephen Slate Drums. Now, this is the full version, but if you're using the free version, you can do this as well. There are just a much more limited number of drum kits. So if I open this up, load myself up a drum kit as I have done. And this is on a singular track that is just mono right now. Stereo, not mono, do apologize. Just a single, uh, stereo track, duh. Now the first thing I want to do is go into the mixer. Uh, I'll pop that out because this screen's quite small. Now, uh, fun fact, if you were using Superior Drummer, there's a button where it says out one stereo here uh, that just says multi-channel and that's a nice quick shortcut to changing them all to be like uh, kick, snare, toms, everything. But that's still only one part of the puzzle. So we're quickly going to go kicks out of one, snares out of two,
It's a nice little shortcut here actually. If I control click more than one, I can then uh, change them all in one go. So I can go output four for the hats. Oops. So then I can have all these coming out of five for symbol mics, uh, six for overheads, and seven for that room and eight for that room. So that's one part done. Now, if I put this back in, so we can see down at the bottom here, all the routing is done for that first stage. The rest of it we see for uh, Stevens Lake Drums is two out of 48 outs. That would take forever to do. But if we click on where it says SSD sampler five, we can go to options and build multi-channel routing for output of selected effects. If I click that, it says, are you sure? It's gonna make loads and loads and loads of tracks for me. I hit yes. And that does that routing. And if we look at our mixer, it's named them all and it's done them all for us, which is really rather nice. So there's all these tracks. I mean, the way that I've decided to use them, I'm never gonna use all of them. But if I hit play now, I can see that the routing comes out of all these outputs all the way up to eight. And then if I've got more than I need and it's overkill, all I have to do is select the one from output nine, say that I don't need, go all the way to the end of the ones I don't need, shift and click and then delete them. Yes, and that won't affect the ones that I do need. So now when I hit play, they're already pre-routed for me. So all I had to do was go into the SSD program, uh, tell each drum where I wanted it to go, and then uh, build my multi-channel routing with that nice little button there that takes a lot of time out of it. I hope you found this video useful. It's certainly something that saved me a lot of time over the years, so hopefully passing that on to you is worth it for you. Uh, the next video is going to be one that sounds a bit boring and a bit dry, but it's actually quite important, and that's about backing things up. Not necessarily just having a separate hard drive and copying all your work, that's fairly obvious. I mean, we all should do that, even those of us that kind of don't really get round to it. But there are other things you can do in Reaper to do with auto saves, time saves, incremental backups, actually having audio record to two separate places at once so that you can't lose the file and if one hard drive blows up, you've still got another one. You know, sometimes the audio that you record is too important to lose. So that's the next part of this video series and stick around for that. Thanks for watching so far. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks to all our patrons on Patreon for supporting us to do these kind of things. Really, really genuinely helps. Thanks guys, see you soon. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this, feel free to check out our other videos as you can find here, or check out our Facebook and Twitter, or our Patreon page, which helps us to make more videos like this. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.